Fiber laser cutting is becoming the leading process for sheet metal cutting, including cutting brass and copper. The reason for that is fiber lasers provide high throughput, high quality, precision and accuracy of the cuts, flexibility in part design, as well as maintenance-free, stable production process. Fiber lasers create really high power density on the surface of these reflective metals. The high power density causes rapid melting of the surface of these materials and therefore the process can quickly overcome the uh, reflectivity barriers and start a stable cutting process. Copper and brass are good reflectors and therefore bad absorbers of infrared laser light. Their reflectivity though uh, does not stay the same with the temperature, it changes with temperature. For example, uh, copper's reflectivity is about 95% at room temperature, but uh, after melting it drops down to 70%. So therefore, copper and brass and some other reflective metals are much more absorbent of the laser light when they are in the molten state. So with the right choice of the laser, optical setup and process parameters, you can quickly melt the surface of these metals and prevent the excessive amount of laser light back reflected and not being absorbed. The excessive back reflected light leads to the inefficiency of the cutting process and potential impact on the optics or laser source. You want to use the maximum peak power that the laser can accommodate to create the highest peak power density on target. Also, for cutting speed, you want to back off 10 to 15 percent from the maximum possible cutting speed to be in the safe process window margin. When transitioning to, from piercing to cutting, you want to make sure that enough dwelling time uh, you have in piercing so your cut starts well before moving the beam. So for cutting gas, it's, for copper, it's recommended to use oxygen, use high pressure oxygen during cutting, and that's because the oxygen forms a dark oxide layer which reduces the reflectivity of the copper. For brass, it's recommended to use nitrogen. You want to set the focus position of the laser beam as close as possible to the surface of the metal during the piercing and cutting. That's because you want the minimum effective beam size on the surface of the metal to have the highest power density. So the critical stage in the cutting of these reflective metal is the initial stage or so-called piercing stage when the laser beam interacts with the solid metal. When the cut is established, the laser mostly interacts with the molten material, which is much more absorbent. Here we are at the IPG laser cube, and we're gonna demonstrate cutting brass and copper today. We start to cut to the piercing stage. The focus is on the surface. full 3 kilowatt peak power in the pulse mode. It's about 100 hertz. For the cutting stage, uh, and but focus down about 06 below the surface of the material, and the laser is in the continuous wave mode or CW mode, and running it at 250 inches per minute or about 6.3 meters per minute. So you see uh, there is a, a little bit dark edge because of the using oxygen as the gas but that's normal in cutting copper with high pressure ox oxygen and there shouldn't be a significant dross that you can't you can't come up with the finger. In the piercing stage, the material is escapes the surface in a particulate form. 
and the laser is in the pulse mode and drills through the thickness of the material and then it transitions to cutting. For cutting to get the good quality draw spree uh, edge, I need to focus down about four millimeter or 0.16 inch into the material. The cut quality should be uniform across the part and it should be smooth and dross free as you see. So this is the part with no significant dross that can't be removed by finger touch. So not many shops can cut brass and copper with uh, high quality and high throughput. The fiber laser systems like LaserCube give the owners the advantage of reliable, high quality, high speed cutting of copper and brass parts. If customers would like more information about the LaserCube or any of our other products, they can go to our website, ipgphotonics.com.